The Hadapalagic Zone, commonly known as the Hadal area, is the bottom part of the ocean and is located in oceanic trenches. The Hadal Zone is located in long, thin, topological V-shaped depressions between 20,000 and 30,000 feet below sea level. In some cases, sending people into outer space is less complicated than sending them to the depths of the ocean. Exploring the deep ocean is extremely difficult due to the enormous pressures. Even though you may not be aware of it, your body experiences approximately 15 pounds of air pressure for every square inch at sea level. If you were outside the Earth's atmosphere, in outer space, the pressure would be zero. However, if you are diving or going in a submarine, similar pressures will begin to mount the deeper you go into the ocean's abyss. Since discovering glacier liquid oceans on Saturn's moons, including Titan and Enceladus, as well as Europa and Ganymede, Jupiter's moons, NASA has collaborated with the World Hole Organization Institute, WHOI, to investigate these oceans. Furthermore, NASA employs commands and vocabulary similar to those used in space exploration. Marine biologists have recently dispatched landers equipped with cameras and detectors to crash land on the ocean floor in the Hadal Zone to collect data and measurements. Aside from these amazing facts, researchers have recently revealed that the depth of the ocean contains components identical to those found on other planets in our solar system. They could even point researchers in the direction of extraterrestrial life. One of the major impediments to ocean exploration is physics. According to oceanographer Dr. Jean Carl Feldman of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, water at large depths has zero visibility, brutally harsh temperatures, and shattering pressure. Allow me to elaborate using the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench is roughly seven miles below the surface of the ocean where the pressure is over a thousand times greater than it is there. That is like having 50 super jumbo jets showering you at the same time. Because of its depth, the Mariana Trench is one of the deadliest locations on Earth. The water is always dark and has a temperature below zero degrees Celsius. The increasing pressure makes it nearly impossible for life to exist as we know it. At this depth, the pressure exceeds eight tons per inch. Any air-filled cavity in the internal organs would instantly collapse under this pressure. Let's take a look at this individual representation of the depth of the Mariana Trench. Dr. Ram pointed out that even if Mount Everest summit was located at the Mariana Trench's lowest point, it would still be more than 2,000 meters below the surface of the ocean. The Mariana Trench was produced by the collision between two tectonic plates, the Pacific Plate and the Mariana Plate. The older, heavier oceanic crust sinks into the mantle as one plate is forced beneath the other. On January the 23rd, 1960, the first manned mission to the unexplored region of the bottom of the Mariana Trench was launched. The Trieste, a submarine piloted by U.S. Naval Commander John Walsh and oceanographer Jacques Picard, stirred the seas. They both witnessed a type of life that was unfathomable to humans at the time. The main question they needed to address was whether there was any life in such highly hostile conditions. After nearly five hours of plunging, the submersible finally reached the bottom of the trench when Picard observed something outside. He called Walsh's name and informed him that he had seen a fish glide by. For several years, marine researchers argued that fish could not survive under such extreme conditions. The two, on the other hand, stuck to their story. The question of whether life lived beneath 11,000 meters of darkness was answered in subsequent missions. Dr. Ram adds that even with the absence of light, the acidic environment and the freezing temperatures, over 200 distinct microorganisms and tiny animals, including crabs and small crustaceans, have been identified to exist in the trend. For this reason, NASA has been practicing deep dives on Earth. The WHOI launched the Nereus in 2008 to explore the depths of the oceans. The Nereus was built with the ability to run autonomously or remotely controlled from the water's surface. 
But in 2014, the underwater ship imploded due to extreme pressure. Following the Nereus disaster, scientists at WHOI and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory concentrated on creating a line of Hadal AUVs, or autonomous underwater vehicles. Orpheus, which was developed right after the Nereus incident, used optical navigation strategies that were also used by NASA's Perseverance Mars rover. The purpose of the AUV is to use ultra-sensitive cameras to identify strata of rock, seashells and other objects on the ocean floor to create 3D maps that are annotated with landmarks or seabed markings. NASA wanted to locate and bring to light existing areas of concern in the Hadar Zone as well as discover new biodiversity through the use of Orpheus. Orpheus can change its mission on the fly and improve performance attained with traditional AUV technology thanks to command and mapping software created by NASA. It was developed to be more agile and able to reach unexplored seafloor trenches and vents since it is lightweight, smaller, and less expensive than previous underwater vehicles. Evidence of organisms that not only lived but also thrived in the Hadal Zone was uncovered by bio-researchers. Given that the pressure there is extraordinarily high, 15,000 pounds per square inch, and would suck an animal's cells out, they were initially perplexed by their presence. But they later came to believe that the food cycle was the primary cause. Enzyme pyzolites, which protect cell membranes and proteins from getting squashed under extreme pressure, are discovered in Hadal Zone organisms. The term pyzolites comes from the Greek word pyzin, which means pressure. Ultimately, scientists concluded that these creatures at the bottom of the trench relied on dead organic materials such as animal corpses and human waste, as well as the constant deposition of additional organic debris or marine snow from above. These discoveries enabled scientists to compare the seas of Earth and other water bodies in outer space. For scientists looking beyond our planet, the discovery of animals that can not only survive but flourish in such a harsh environment brought major thoughts about whether similar species may be discovered on these other ocean planets. The Hadal Zone is not devoid of life. Rather, it supports an unusually diverse biosphere of life. One of the organisms discovered at the deepest locations was a large amphipod over three inches long that was found living over four miles under the crust at the bottom of the Peru Chile Trench, also known as Richard's Deep. Eurothenis atacamensis, a crustacean similar to a shrimp, is a predator that feeds on fragments of dead marine life that float to the surface. The Eurothenis atacamensis, together with at least three species of strange and extraordinarily delicate snailfish and long-legged isopods, was discovered in 2018 by researchers led by Joanna Weston, a marine biologist at Newcastle University. These four creatures are believed to be one of the most common creatures found in the trend. Every one of them has adapted to thrive in the Hadal Zone's tremendous pressures, freezing temperatures and complete darkness. The saltwater ocean, which is thought to be 40 to 100 miles deep, and contains twice the volume of water as all of Earth's oceans combined, resides beneath Jupiter's moon Europa's icy surface. No sunshine can penetrate Europa's thick ice layer, which is studded with cracks and fissures. The pressure beneath the frozen crust is nearly equivalent to the pressure in the Hadar Zone. Researchers claim that Europa is right here on Earth, and that we can't study it until we can effectively explore the Earth's waters. Trips to the ocean's depths, like missions beyond our planet, enable us to see the Earth in new ways. While NASA says that their maritime trips have resulted in hundreds of scientific advances, they're also producing data that may be critical if we are to continue living on a planet with clean ocean. We must understand major knowledge about our maritime ecosystems if we are to protect them. According to Laura Lorenzoni, an ocean biology and biogeochemistry program scientist at NASA's Science Mission Directorate. NASA's ongoing measurements, she believes, are critical to preserving the appropriate use of our marine resources. 
This means that with each step forward in the discovery of other planets, we get a little more understanding about some extremely undiscovered regions on our own blue Earth. And that brings us to the end of this video. Let us know in the comments section if you think NASA exploring the depths of the sea will have positive or negative effects on our planet. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified when we post a new video.